By now, you know that there are a number of factors that influence demand for a particular good or service. There's taste, income, price, the number of potential buyers, and the price of related goods or services. Now, to understand the impact of all these factors, you need to take each factor in turn and try to trace its impact on the quantity demanded of a particular good. Economics is a social science, and unlike natural science, our experiments cannot be controlled. In a laboratory, scientists can control the environment and keep certain variables constant. This makes it easier to measure the effect, for instance, of one chemical on another, and they can repeat the process with the same two chemicals over and over to confirm results and prove formulae. Economists do not have this luxury. We are confronted by a complex world in which many things are changing, all at the same instant and all the time. It would be great if we could freeze everything else while we're busy with our experiment. But in our complex and ever-changing world, this is unfortunately just not possible. What we can do is invoke the ceteris paribus condition, which allows us to assume that all other factors remain constant or unchanged, so that we can focus on just the one factor we're trying to understand. Ceteris paribus is an old Latin term meaning all other things being equal. Let's start by considering the impact of the price of the product on the quantity demanded. In this case, we'll regard all the other variables except the price as constant. That's why we place a bar on top of them. Based on what we learned earlier about the price of our favourite fast food, what's the relationship between the price of that food and the amount we demand of it? That's right, the lower the price, the more we want of it. Or, as a true economist would say, the higher the price, the lower the quantity of fried chicken demanded, and vice versa. This is known as a negative, or inverse relationship. As one variable goes up, the other comes down, and vice versa. Now, this relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity demanded of it is so important and economists are so confident about it that we've given it the status of a law. The law of demand. Now, the law of demand, simply stated, says that the higher the price of a good or service, the lower the quantity demanded of it, ceteris paribus, all other things being equal. Now, this isn't a law in the legal sense. You won't go to jail if you disobey it. Think of it more like a natural law, something that economists have found to be true again and again, and in situation after situation. Let's explore this relationship a little further. Our old friends, Lyndon, Evie and Kate, share a house together as students. Two or three times a week, they like to get takeaways, and for a number of reasons, fried chicken seems to be the common favourite. I am going to try to find how many pieces of chicken they plan to consume this week assuming some different prices. We'll enter this information into a table, the price in column one and quantity of fried chicken pieces in column two. Now I'm hoping this table will help to illustrate the relationship between price and quantity demanded, ceteris paribus, ignoring all other factors. How many fried chicken pieces do you plan to eat? That's quantity demanded, QD, this week at seven rand per piece. I don't know, two pieces? All right then, six rand a piece. Four pieces? Five rand a piece? Six pieces. Uh, four rand? Eight pieces. Three rand? Ten pieces. Two rand? Twelve pieces. At uh, one rand a piece? Fourteen pieces. Now, looking at the table, what you'll see is that the lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. And the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. In other words, at six rand per piece, only four pieces are demanded. But at two rand per piece, 12 pieces are demanded. So this then demonstrates the law of demand in table form. 
So this table not only shows how much is demanded at a certain price, but also how much the quantity demanded changes if the price changes. This is important, as we'll see later. OK, we've just looked at the relationship between price and quantity demanded, illustrated in table form. Now it's time to look at this most fundamental concept illustrated as a graph. It's called the demand curve and is one of the cornerstones of all economics. Remember though, all of this is common sense. You probably understand some of this law of demand already. It simply states, if the price of a good increases, the quantity demanded decreases. Like the table, this graph or curve will help us uncover more of the secrets behind this law. Think of it as a tool to help you visualize what's happening around you. We're going to use the information in the table to draw a demand curve showing the negative or inverse relationship between the price of fried chicken and the quantity demanded over the period of a week. Now, I suggest that you out there watching this DVD get yourself a piece of paper, ruler and a pencil and do this following exercise with us. The first step is to draw the axes and indicate the origin, zero. The second step is to decide which variables are to be plotted on the axis. Since we're interested in the relationship between price and quantity demanded, we'll plot the price values P on the vertical axis and the quantity demanded, QD, on the horizontal axis. The next step is to indicate the price and quantity demanded intervals on each axis. From the table, we can see that there are seven different sets of figures, and so we indicate seven equally spaced intervals on our axes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven intervals. And the same again for the horizontal axis. Now, we plot the corresponding price and quantity of demanded values. We'll start with the price values. Moving up from the origin, our first value is 1 rand, followed by 2 rand, 3 rand, 4 rand, 5 rand, 6 rand, and of course 7 rand. And I do the same for the quantity demanded values, which start with a quantity of 2, and 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. Now we can plot points that show the different price to quantity demanded combinations. According to the table, our first combination says that at the price of 7 rand, the quantity demanded is two pieces of fried chicken. This combination then is represented by this point on the diagram. And we can similarly plot the rest of the combinations. When we join all of the points to form a curve and label it D, D at each end, we have created our first demand curve. So, what can this curve show us? First, we know that price determines quantity demanded. The downward slope shows that a negative or inverse relationship exists between price and quantity demanded. As the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases and a downward movement along the curve takes place. So what happens to the quantity demanded if the price drops from 6 Rand to 2 Rand? At a price of 6 Rand, the quantity demanded is 4. At a price of 2 Rand, the quantity demanded is 12. The quantity demanded therefore increases by 12 minus 4, and that's 8. And this is represented by a downward movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. The negative relationship also indicates that as the price increases, the quantity demanded decreases, so an upward movement along the demand curve takes place. So what happens to the quantity demanded if the price increases from 3 Rand to 6 Rand? Well, at a price of 3 Rand, our quantity demanded is 10. At 6 Rand, all we want is 4 pieces. The quantity demanded has dropped by 10 minus 4, that's 6 pieces. So an upward movement along the demand curve from point C to D takes place. That then is the law of demand, illustrated by the demand curve. It's pretty straightforward. If prices go up, 
the quantity demanded goes down, and vice versa. We're starting to construct a model of how prices are determined in a market by the forces of demand and supply. As we get more into this, we'll be able to demonstrate our understanding of the market using demand and supply curves.